where Jordan is. You understand? I live in projects. So you gotta understand. It's serious. Right? So when a brother does that stuff just to eat, he gets not somebody else is profiting off your head. Thousands and millions of dollars, y'all. Next slide for me. You get paid off, y'all. Now, I'm gonna read something to you. It is the presence of human consciousness that brings meaning to our world. And through our consciousness, we create the world we live in. Everything we, every thought we have, right, can be manifested. Everything we see comes from a thought, y'all. Somebody thought, I'm gonna make a chair to slide up like that. Now we got a chair to slide up like that, right? Somebody said, I'm gonna make Cadillacs. They make Cadillacs. Now everybody wants a Cadillac, right? Everything we see is a thought. So when you think something so much, it becomes a reality one way or another. Do you understand? Now what consciousness are we in? Who are we in? Right? The older generation is tired of y'all. They're afraid of y'all. They're scared of y'all. They think y'all some fools. I'm going to tell you straight up. I watched a scholar the other day who talked about hip hop as a, as, a, as a messed up industry, a denigrated industry that was some dessert. That's what he called it. He said hip hop was dessert. It's not a main course, it's a dessert. It ain't even a real art form. This is what the elders are saying about us, y'all. They think we crazy. They think we crazy because we wore pants like that, right? They think we crazy because we wore one or two chains. But we got a scully in the hood, right? And I say to the elders, what Scarface says, right? He says, the old folks is mad at us because their kids is lost. How you expect us to teach them when all you did was talk? You know what I'm saying? Right? This is what Scarface said. This is how a lot of us think. Right? Man, you just talking, man. Get out of here, man. You ain't got no job for me. You ain't helping me get cracked out of my community. Right? Let's wake up. Consciousness is everything. It's everything. It affects everything about you. Not only your culture, but everything. What consciousness are you in? Are you a zombie? Or are you a functioning adult, an African black male? Because that's who we all are. We're descendants of Africans. You never heard that before, you heard it from me. Get it clear right now. We civilize this planet. A lot of things happen to get us away from them powerful people. When we did some things to you know, civilize the world, we gave the world mad. Agriculture, science. You look at what they call the pygmies who are really called the Twelve. You look at the Kushites, you look at the Egyptians. Okay? You look at these historical people. And there's evidence. Not myth or allegory. Evidence. Not myth or allegory. Just raise your hand if you know what an allegory is. Please raise your hand. Explain what an allegory is to the brothers, please. Yes, sir. I'm going to shake your hand, brother. Thank you. Could you, stand, could you stand up and say that louder for me, please? What's an allegory? An allegory is like a theoretical story. A theoretical story. Something that someone made up from the truth. All right, I'll give you an example. We have the Nation of Islam, the Yaqub story. That is an allegory, right? But there's truth in that allegory. When they say that the Yaqub invented the white man, and he, the white man went into the cave, there's truth to that. But it's really an allegory. And I love Elijah Muhammad. I don't knock him for what he tried to do. Right? But the story's allegory. The Grimaldi Africans went into the caves, got stuck in the Ice Age, and came out white. That is true. There's evidence, there's historical evidence to back that up. Okay? There's no evidence to say that an evil scientist took the germ of a black man and made the white man. That's the story that they say. Do you understand? There's allegory, and there's myth, and then there's truth, okay? As you grow, understand that, learn that, listen to what your adults are saying, but break it down when you, as you get older and understand that a lot of things are allegory and myth. Next slide for me, sister. Now, Ace and G. Hilliard talked about Tim Nash and Chief. Ace and G. Hilliard is a professor of psychology at Georgia State. He was one of the guys on the front. 
that I talked about. Okay? Now we're going to go around the room and one at a time we're going to read one of these. Let's start with the brother here. Read number one, please. Control of thought. Control of thought. What is that, y'all? Control of thought. To control what you think. Control your mind. Your mind is a vessel. It is a powerful weapon that can take you out of anything. It'll take you out of any situation. This thing in between your two ears, which a lot of young brothers don't use. Right? Control of thought. Control what you think. Control what you put in your body. You be saying those songs, turn them off. You see a movie with a brother with a dress, acting like a fool, turn it off. Kind of society unless they're men who are dressed and entertained. Come on, man. Read, read number two for me, brother. Control of action. Control of action. Very simple. Control of action. You gotta control what you do. You gotta watch what you do. Fly out. Life is a series of serious choices. I wrote about it in my book, y'all. But the dead press. Life is a series of serious choices. One choice will destroy you. One wrong choice will destroy you the rest of your life. I'll give you an example. You have a baby out of wedlock. You knock the sister up. She's 16, you 17. And you knock her up. You stuck with that baby for the rest of your life. And it's a woman that you ain't even really like. You was just doing it to have fun. Now imagine what she got to go through. By herself, man gone, just was with her, right? She got with him because he had some fresh sneaks on. He's popular, right? One wrong choice will mess up your whole life. Flat out. Read number three for me, sister, please. Steadfastness of purpose. Steadfastness of purpose. Raise your hand if anybody understands what that means. Steadfastness of purpose. Right? 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 Steadfastness of purpose. Stick to your goals. Work hard at what you do. These three brothers right here, the rulers, they travel the country, you know? They practice, what do you practice? Three, four times a week? What is it, every day? Every day, every day these brothers are practicing. Right? Steadfastness of purpose. Stay on your objective. Right? Whatever you're trying to do, do it hard. Go hard at it. Right? When I learned that a scholar in Africa had to study for 22 years before he became a teacher, I said, hold up here. I got a long way to go. Right? And I got to stay on my purpose, which is to find out what happened to us, y'all, and to teach it to y'all. Without fear. Without worry. Without being watered down. Flat out. Be number four for me, brother. Identify with the spiritual light. Identify with the spiritual light. That means that some type, some kind of way, you got to tap into that spiritual side. Side. We all have it. As Africans, we're a spiritual people. You've always been a spiritual people. Now, whatever you do, if you're Muslim, if you're Christian, I'm not here to knock that. You understand? But identify with something that will make you a better person. They can give you some kind of code to live by. And study it. Be prudent. And the Bible says a wise man is a prudent man. That means you don't believe everything that you hear. You listen to me. You go right down Bobby Wright. You go right down Ivan Van Sertel and you research it yourself. And then you say, oh, that brother Steve James was right. Then you say I was right. Not because I stand here and I sound like I'm right. A prudent man. Do you understand? Remember that, y'all. Number five for me, brother. Evidence of having a mission in life. Evidence of having a mission in life. You gotta have some type of evidence. Some type of your behavior has to reflect some type of way of having a mission, a reason to live. A lot of our brothers walk around with no reason to live, y'all. You understand? I got a car, I catch the bus every now and then just to jail with people, just to ride it, and just to see how the people talk. And man, the other day I rode, I looked at these young brothers and I said, oh my goodness. Look at how these brothers is talking. He's on the phone talking about, you got that scale for me, yo? Yo, you got that scale? I said, give me them bags. On the phone? You don't even know how to hustle right. Goofy. You so goofy, you don't even know how to hustle. You talking about it on the goddamn phone. You understand? How silly is that? Serious, man. We have no mission in life. We walk around just doing whatever. And again, I'm not 
saying nobody in this room is like that, but I'm saying our people in general, a lot of us are like that. We don't know what time it is. We don't know what we're doing. We're going through day to day. And a lot of times it ain't the child's fault. It's the parents or the people who are raising this child. Right? I talked about the first page of my book. How, and I asked the question, is it the mother's fault? Is it the father's fault? Right? Whose fault is this? Right? Is it the woman who's raising the child every day? Or is it the man who left? Who is the blame for why we are the way we are? Who's the blame, no? It's both. It's both. It ain't just one. It's both. The woman got to step up her game and understand who she is, realize her that she's God's nurturer, and do the right thing. See, we blame the man a lot because, you know, the man ain't there. I got to be the man in the day. But no, 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 no. You look back in time to the matriarchal societies of Africa the woman did the raising by herself for thousands of years. Men were in the woods, men were in the jungle, finding food, fighting wars. Women did it by themselves. And when the man came home, by the way, they still loved him. Mm-hmm. Wasn't though you've been gone for six months, you dirty, get out of here. No, they still loved him. They fixed the food and took care of him because they know they were warriors. Yeah. Do you understand? Come on, y'all. Next, brother. Mm-hmm. Number six. Evidence of the call to spiritual war. Spirit. You got to show some type of evidence that you have tapped into some type of spirituality. It has to show in your behavior. You can't just say that we, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I'm a 5%. It's not enough to say that, okay? It's not enough to say that. You gotta show in your behavior, in your daily life. It's one of the things that I've had to work on in my personal life. We all have imperfections. We all have imperfections. Okay? We all have a perfection. No one's perfect. Okay? But you can't identify with some type of spirituality. You have to. You have to. Next, who's next? Read, read the next one, bro. Confidence and power in one but master the subject. Yes, sir. And that's a powerful one right there. I'm going to say it out loud. Confidence and the power in one who has mastered their subject. Confidence. Right? Confidence in someone who has mastered your subject. Oh, excuse me, we skip one. Let's go back. Read seven from oh, Freedom brother. from resentment. Right. right under persecution. Yes, sir. Freedom from resentment. We skipped that one. That's number seven. All that is is don't be a hater. Read it to yourself. Right? Freedom from resentment under persecution. Don't be a hater. Don't hate the next man because he's shining. Right? Don't knock him down because he's shining. Because he got a fresh, you know, pair of sneaks and he got his gear is tight. And you ain't got nothing. So what? Clothes and stuff don't mean nothing. Don't make the man. Don't no car, no house make the man. You understand? Don't be a hater. And the next one, we already read, confidence in the power and one who has mastered the subject. You got to have confidence in someone who's mastered the subject. Help them. Support people. Show love. It's one of the biggest things that we have a lack of. We scared to say love each other. We scared to tell brother, you know I love you, for fear of being called gay. You understand? Everybody has a male or female side to them. Dualities. Everybody has both. The problem is, is that we tend to lean too much on the masculine. And not the feminine. A balanced person will use both. 